Hi, welcome to another video. This is a follow-up on that brand new PV Pro Series 2000 amplifier. It's a 2000 watt Class B amplifier. Very powerful and it's very new. It lasted five minutes and blew up. So I know Kofi, you were wondering how I was going to fix it or if I was able to. So that big device that was bolted to a heatsink there did some research, that is just two FETs, two big FETs, custom FETs in a custom package made by these people, IXYS, and it blew up. So the fault was nothing to do with them, but anyway, it blew up, this is now obsolete. It's also got a temperature sensor inside, which I've got here from Farnell Components, little 5000 ohm negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So I've got these two high power FETs, 650 volt each, rated at something like 40, 50, 60 amps or 80 amps, about four or five pound each. I thought, well, I'll give these a go. Put these on a heat sink, bolt it all up, nothing. So if you watched any of my other videos, you'll know I like powering individual circuits up with separate bench power supplies, see if the circuit's working. Now over here, so we've got the mains comes in here, if you're running at 240 volts, one of these cuts in and bridges the neutral in the middle of these to the neutral rail coming in. The other relay bypasses these two inrush limiters. So I put 20 volts there and all this fired up. This is a triac to actually switch the mains on and it's then rectified and smooth. You get 380 odd volts DC. This little common mode choke, taps the 240 volts off and runs down to here to a TOP, uh, a top 4-4 offline switcher. There we are, so there's the multi-pin offline switcher. 240 volts comes in here. Is this camera going to focus? 240 volts comes in to here. This switches power, throw a transformer here and gives us 20 volts to run this circuit and there's a 15 volt regulator there. So there was nothing coming out of the old one on here so I chopped it out, it seemed dead, chopped it out, put another one in, plugged it into the mains, it started tripping my house. So I've been on this for hours and hours. There were many diodes down here, so I took two out, the ones that run the plus and minus 15 volt rail. Now the plus and minus 15 volt rail is to run these devices here. Now this device with the small modification, that's a dual pulse width modulation chip to give us our two drives that would then run through this dual FET driver to drive these two FETs inside here. Those two FETs would switch the 380 volts DC independently through these coils to go give our supplies out to the amplifier. Sort of plus 120 and minus 120 or thereabouts. Four rectifiers under there. There's a plus and minus plus minus 15 volt regulator, fan speed down there. So easy once you break it down into individual blocks. This is a 12 volt regulator. So I established with these diodes removed, this offline switcher, which is sort of out of view now, was getting red hot in seconds. And if I just quickly show you, I was using this, got this off eBay for not much more than 120 pound a couple of years ago. This can run up to a thousand volts at just over half an amp look, 300 watts. And you can set current limit, as you see mine set to 200 milliamps. And at the moment for this switcher, it was set to 90, 100 volts. Rather than 240 becomes a bit dangerous. So this is isolating the supply from the mains and you can turn on the timer and leave something run for so much time. 
it's actually electrophoresis power supply. So you would take your high voltage, connect some probes to a gel. There's my probes. Connect some probes to a gel with little troughs, and you put in a material. You'd look at the molecules travelling through this gel, and that's how they look at DNA using a high voltage power supply. So that's what an electrophoresis power supply is for, generally looking at DNA samples. I put my 100 volts here, ground over here, and this chip getting red hot in seconds. I took the diode out of this circuit, took all the diodes out of there, so this had nothing to run and it still consumed 70 milliamps and got red hot. I thought it must be driving a short circuit. So I took this transformer apart. So I've undone a couple of the secondary windings. I think one of the secondary windings is actually wound in the middle, this thin wire that's actually broken in here. Not sure if this camera's gonna pick it up. That's a really thin winding, it's quite high impedance. That's 250 volts for the tube at the front end of that amplifier. I think the primary is possibly this one. So first of all you see it's a shame I should have videoed it as I was unwinding it because the last winding I took off was a real mess all over the place. Transformers, you know, flyback transformers meant to be wound neatly and you can see so this lot I haven't touched yet there's gaps all over the place. That makes for poor efficiency. There's no screening on any of the windings. So I'm not sure what the e EMI ratings were on this transformer. But, so this is the primary. I've undone one complete turn, got to there, and hopefully you can see that's burnt. It's been arcing on the 250 volts for the tube supply. So that offline switcher, it was a top 244, and it's something like a 30 or 36 watt offline switcher. They're commonly found in TVs, that sort of stuff. So they use a small amount of current on standby, and then when you press the remote, they'll fire it up, start delivering, you know, sort of 20, 30 watts, and then other supplies can turn on. But so in this primary winding, just there, as I say, I'm not sure if you know, I can see the burn on this screen, so hopefully you'll be able to see it too. That primary winding was shorting out to the secondary 240 volts, so that's probably why it's tripping my electrics. And with that burning and shorting out, the poor little chip was getting red hot with half the circuits disconnected. So this is actually a gapped core, but if I join those two ends together, you see the gap in the middle. That reduces the overall inductance, but also stops the core from getting saturated. So looking at this, it looks like it's made by a company called Pulse in China. And so like the Mackie transformers, I've, I've shown one or two on my channel. If you're getting your transformers wound in China, you have to be careful what company you choose. So they're sort of eight times cheaper than the UK, at least, but they do a crappy job. So this crappy company here have let PV down because this brand new transformer has blown up within five, 10 minutes. So here's a quick look at the circuit drawing for that small part of that power supply. There's the top 244 offline switcher. Mains comes in here, smoothed, so we've got 400 volts there, so 380 in UK and Europe, 380 volts here, that's the primary, which is actually the second turn on this transformer. Two lots of turns there, comes down here, so in this chip we've got a FET pulling that supply on and off to ground. So that's switching the current through this primary. The feedback network, this is actually quite simple because they bypassed all the current limit, that sort of stuff. So this secondary winding here, 
or this sense winding here, rectify that, and when this pin, pin one, the control pin, gets up to about 5.8 volts from here, that finishes the soft start and just runs at the normal frequency. But initially, with hindsight, I had trouble getting this up to 5.8 volts because this primary is shorting out to this secondary. Now this secondary here, see over there, 250 volts for that tube for, for the front end. You saw my other video, it's got a tube or valve. So that primary is shorting out to that. If you're wondering why there's two diodes, all these diodes are the same. So all they do is stick two in series, which effectively doubles the voltage you can put across them. So if, if these were only rated at, say, 160 volts, put two in series, you can, you know, double that voltage across them. So that's our 250 volts out for the valve. Plus and minus 20. I've disconnected these, and this primary circuit started firing up. I was able to get 20 volts here, 15 I forgot where I was now because I just got a phone call and I forgot to turn that power supply off. So this offline switcher, that's pulling this supply through this coil on and off down to ground. This is generating our magnetic field in this transformer, that one you've just seen. We get 250 volts, uh, plus 20, minus 20, later, through, uh, later regulated through two supplies. Over here, plus or minus 15. They run the electronics and the fans, and so that the whole amplifier can start up, that offline switcher through this sense coil, so half the sense, this comes up to 5.8 volts, that then stops the soft start and runs normally. We get another 20 volts here, regulated to 15, so this is a primary 15 and primary 20. They run to various circuits, and here's one of them, so this circuit, for example, line voltage sense, this establishes is your amplifier running on 110 or 240. That sort of stuff. And here's a closer look at that IXYS block. As I say, two FETs. There's the two FETs there. Uh, rated at roughly 600 volts, but so I've gone for some 650, I think 80 odd amps. As I say, they're five, six pound each. There's a temperature sensor, uh, and, and those two FETs, driven from two signals from that chip I showed you earlier, will simply switch the current at 350 volts DC or 380 on and off through those coils to give us our plus or minus 120 or plus or minus 140, whatever it is. So you can see here, I had the thermal pads on this heat sink. This temperature sensor was under one of the screws. So when this gets hot, this still picks up the temperature and my two FETs temporarily with these long wires just bolted to there and there and I was going to lay the lay it down insulate it just to try it when I was running this with my own supplies so plus or minus 15 down here plus 20 up here uh, I think I had another 50 60 volts coming in here which is a little less this switch mode power supply was working and giving me some voltage here at one point I managed to get 100 volts out. I haven't seen any more of these amplifiers, but if you had one and one of these power MOSFET modules have blown up, yeah, they're obsolete. So just figure out what it is and get your arrow. This was what I said it was. This is taking those two signals and driving the two gates for these two. These are actually, I'll say MOSFETs, these are actually insulated gate bipolar transistors. So RGBTs. And so, like the Mackies, you can have, you know, a really good design, a powerful system, but if those bloody Chinese man manufacturers are going to give you shabby quality, it's going to fail. So look, this whole amplifier killed because of the Chinese manufacturer, whoever made this. Just look at the gaps in this, these windings. There shouldn't be gaps, it should be nice and tight with no gaps. Uh, the secondary winding, or the second turn on this, was right mess coming across here. 
So, Pulse Transformers in China, they've let this eye down. Poor workmanship again. I was actually quite happy taking this apart because I suspected that chip was driving a short circuit. And as I'm taking off the tape, that little bit there is burnt of a great crappy transformer. So nothing to do with PV, it's all down to the Chinese. Again. I might try and rewind this, I don't know, but these are the lengths I'll go to to find a fault, and certainly before you're writing off this amplifier because this transformer is not available. I might try and rewind it, but by then I've got this mess to, to deal with. Anyway, Kofi, I know you were interested what I was going to do. Well, that's what I was going to do, and I've come across this stumbling block. So this has probably started going short circuit. We've started losing our supply to this chip, which drives that big FET, and the, probably the voltage has dropped in such a way to cause, maybe cause both those transistors to be on at the same time, or something like that, and it's just blown. If I ever get this going, I'll do another update. Thank you for watching.